The following program is recorded content created by the Truth Network. It's Matt Slick Live. Matt is the founder and president of the Christian Apologetics Research Ministry, found online at karm.org. When you have questions about Bible doctrines, turn to Matt Slick Live for answers. Taking your calls and responding to your questions at 877-207-2276. Here's Matt Slick. Everybody, welcome to the show. It's me, Matt Slick, and you're listening to Matt Slick Live. If you want to give me a call, all you have to do is dial 877-207-2276. You can also email me at info at karm.org, info at karm.org. And, um, interesting. Uh, anyway, so I'll explain. We get a little bit of a problem here just suddenly uh, developing. But uh, info at karm.org, and you can put in um, radio question or radio comment in there, and uh, that would be very helpful. Very helpful. All right. All right. So, um, yeah, just a little bit of a kind of a wiggy internet thing. I don't know what's going on. It's kind of acting up, and I can't get into Clubhouse, so I'm trying that. And when it gets there, it gets there. Um, Every now and then things happen. All right. So hey, look. Like I said, I want to give, want you to give me a call eight seven seven two zero seven two two seven six. I have nobody waiting right now. Um, you know, the producer. I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about this. But, uh, normally, I wouldn't do something like this, but um, I was talking to the producer, and uh, he said I got a call uh, after uh, I hung up on that uh, that lady yesterday, and she said uh, that. Somebody called and said I was being very arrogant. And uh, I certainly hope that was not the case of of arrogance. I do try and and be humble before my Lord. But um, here's the thing is that I don't want people to use the CARM platform or the radio platform to speak heresy. That's one thing to say, well, I believe this, and they tell me why, and I go back and forth. But when they start to talk so much that I can't get a word in edgewise, I say, hold on, hold on, hold on, and they keep talking, then I, that's when I put the foot down and say, we're done. And so uh, that's what I'm, I, I, why, that, that's the reason actually I hung up on her. If she's not going to uh, let me speak on my own show, then we're not going to be able to communicate. And that's, uh, that's what that is. So that's why that is. But um, no, I do take all that stuff in the comments seriously. I, I want to uh, do what's right before my Lord. And at the same time, guard the body of Christ, and while giving information, while looking at one, two, three, four different screens, different uh, monitor, different web things, I'm looking at while I'm doing the show. <laughs> so it's a bit tough. It's a bit tough sometimes. All right, uh, is it the last day of April today? Is it? Let me see. Oh my goodness, it is. Oh May first. Man, this millennium's flying by. Wow. Ooh, I, oh well, what are you going to do? Okay, so if you want to give me a call, 877-207-2276. And it's um, unusual. Usually we have a lot of callers coming in right now, but oh, that's okay. So um, what I could do is is I can just jump into some emails. And we've got a lot of questions. Like people, uh, they ask a lot of stuff, and so I think what I'm going to do is uh, get into our radio comments, radio questions, and uh, we'll get to that. Let's see. Um, how about this radio question? Uh, okay, then, oh, it, what? This is, uh, I think, what? Okay, uh, someone sent It's interesting they do this. They, uh, they, they send me an article that they've written, and then say that I can use it. But I'm, I'm confused. I'm confused. Um, they want me. Just because they send me an article doesn't... I don't know what's going on. That'll be another thing I'll look at later. All right. How about this? This is a good evening, Matt. Uh, questions about Luke 15, 14. Patchers on a TV program teach that if we... He would have died... If he would have died unrepentant state, he would have gone to hell. Uh, let's see what that is. That's Matthew fifteen fourteen. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Uh, they're both the blind man blinds guides the blind. Peter said, uh, lacking understanding also, 
Everything goes into the mouth. Okay, I, I don't see what's going on here. Also, pastors teach that wicked servant who would love... Okay, you know what? I'm sorry, but uh, I can't understand the sentence. So I'm going to say this, that you can go on to Grammarly, grammarly grammarly.com, and you can sign up for a basic account free, and you can put your emails in there, and you can have them be grammar analyzed so that when you send them, they'll make sense, because I couldn't make sense out of that one. All right, we start out speaking one language, whatever that language was, so when we get to heaven... um, Will we get back to the one language? I don't know. Don't know what the original language was. Don't know if we're going to have a different kind of a language. Don't know if it be thought or spoken. I don't know. It's a good question, though. Just don't know what the uh, what the Bible teaches about it. I, I just guesswork at this point. Hey, let's get on the air with Brian from Greenville North. I mean the North Greenville, Ohio. Hey, uh, welcome. You're on the air. Hi, Matt. How are you uh, today? <laughs> hanging in there. Hanging in there. So what do you got, man? What's up? Well, good. Well, I wanted to say, first off, I appreciate the piece you did on whether or not Satan can influence someone's thinking, because I found that very informative and uh, enjoyed the article you wrote on it. But uh, we have an issue going on in our church where we have a gentleman who uh, is there, I believe, to push an agenda. He is uh, eating any animal as murder, and he's... He tries to push that forward, and I was looking at the verses in Roman, Romans 1, 25 and 26, where well, it talks about in, the, in, in times where people uh, fall under delusion and start to worship the creation instead of the creator. And I wonder, yeah. you know, that, that sort of applies a little bit where they're, we were putting animals on a, a higher level than God intended them to be. Uh, mm-hmm. Is there any so other is- verses or anything in the Bible you can think of that address that particular issue well the thing I'm concerned about at first um, is uh, he's saying that it's murder to eat animals right yeah and it's a sin because it's it's a sin of selfishness is what uh, he's doing and the, 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 okay. the fear is, is he's trying to he's wanting to have classes and everything on it mm-hmm. and use the church as a platform for his agenda yeah yeah he he's uh, he is his Loctite is, is frozen over. He's, he's not working right. Um, no, it's not murder. He always has to define our terms, define what murder is. And he has to do it. If he's going to say biblically, then he needs to find out what that is. And if any place in the Scripture says that eating any animal is murder, since the Bible does say that he's given us uh, everything to eat. In fact, when in Acts, they let the... Uh, the the yep. sheet down to Peter, you know, kill and right. eat. Right. Jesus ate the Passover lamb, which is what you're supposed to eat as a Jew. So if it's murder, then why did Jesus do it? And that's, those are the questions I, I would ask him. And he has no business whatsoever teaching anybody. None. Oh, absolutely. And in the beginning, I mean, when you, in Genesis, who, who killed and sacrificed the very first animal? That's right. It doesn't say that God did that, but the implication is he covered them with animal skins, and the implication is is yeah. uh, the shedding of blood. So in Leviticus uh, seventeen eleven, so, they uh, you know they they shed blood uh, in seventeen fourteen. They shed blood a great deal, and so the animal sacrifices in the Old Testament were commanded by God. So why then would this guy say it's murder? I, I just don't get it. it you know, he's got a problem. Well, a personal preference, I guess. A personal preference is trying to be pushed, but it's also through delusion because it, it, yeah. you know, it's like absolutely can't see it any other way and actually writes a lot of bad articles in the newspaper about Christians for not taking that view that we found. So, he, um, he, Wait a second. He's, actually, is he claiming to be a Christian? No, well, that's why I, I ask him that. Yeah, it's like, did, yeah. were you ever saved? Have you ever been uh, any – the issue gets skirted, so I would say no. But uh, so where, where's that verse in Acts where it says kill and eat and the sheep lower down? I know I know where the verse you're talking about, but is there any others that you would give me to uh, yeah. discuss? Well, it's Acts 10 right there. Uh, you just go through Acts okay. 10. It'll talk about the sheep coming down out of heaven. And Jesus ate the Passover yeah. lamb. And uh, let's see. So where's, you know, he says Passover. And um, I'm trying to find where Jesus did. Um. I'm looking, scrolling through things quickly. So uh, there we go. Now the Passover, the feast for the Jews was near. Uh, to buy bread. I just can find it really quickly. If not, uh, looking for. Yeah, I have earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. 
So Jesus has earnestly desired to eat the, the Paschal lamb. So what okay. this comes down to, I would ask the guy, I would say, uh, are you calling Jesus a murderer? Just ask him. <laughs> yeah. where, so what, where is that verse, man? That's uh, Luke twenty-two fifteen. Luke twenty-two fifteen. That's okay. Right. Thank you very much. Sure. Yeah, he does not have all his paws in a litter box. That's for sure. Uh, okay. Well, thank you, Matt, and have a have a great rest of your day. You too. You too, man. God bless. Okay. All okay. Right. God bless you. Bye. Okay. Bye. Okay. Now let's get on with Buxman. From Ohio, Buxman, welcome. You're on the air. Hey, Matt, that was an awesome call, and thanks for that information. I was thinking too what your previous caller said. Um, Jesus also ate fish. I mean, the boys were fishermen. His That's disciples, true. most of them, were fishermen. So, so they That's were right. pulling, they were murdering for their livelihood, and Jesus ate murdered fish. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my goodness. That's crazy. Yeah. I would say to that dear caller, call him out for what he is so that the, the sheep in that house, wherever that man's teaching, will be guarded. Uh, that man, I, I wouldn't know. I, I would go up to him. If I, if I heard teaching like that. Yeah. Wait, did we lose you? Are you still there? Exactly. Hello? And if, oh, okay. if, you, if, you, if you do not... If you do not repent, uh, sir, I wouldn't call him a brother either. I'm sorry, my, my phone just glitched. I would go in front of that pastor and I would say, sir, you can't say that kind of stuff to a Christian audience. That is not biblical. I got to call you out because I'm protecting the sheep who thinks you're a real shepherd. That's what I would do if I was that caller. But any, And I've done that, yeah. now, by the way. Um, now, my question to you, brother, was um, I've got a dear friend, a <clears throat> dear friend, Matt, and he is a very, very devout Catholic. He believes oh, all the traditions. <laughs> he, I know. He can quote the history of the saints who did this miracle and that miracle by heart, but he also knows the scriptures. Okay. And he was saying, Busman, transubstantiation. Am I pronouncing that correctly, Matt? Transubstantiation. Transubstantiation. Okay. Yes, that's it. Where he believes, Matt, that the wafer and the wine turn to literal flesh and literal blood. What can I say or do scripturally, even lovingly, as an act of a, of a heart who loves this man? What can I do to persuade him not to fall into that doc, into that ideology, that doctrine? I, I I fear for him. I mean, is that not his Achilles heel um, that Satan can grab and just pull him right right into the pit of hell with? Or am I going yeah. too far, Matt? With that? No, you're not going too far. Uh, he's a loyalist okay. to the church. He's not a loyalist to Christ. His, his Christ is not his Lord. The Roman Catholic Church is. The reason I say this is because they believe what the wow. Roman Catholic Church says. So the church functionally has replaced Jesus with itself. Now we get back from the break. I'll explain some more about all of this and how you, utterly, sir. utterly evil, official Roman Catholic theology really is. It's really bad, and uh, I know that's quite a statement to make before the break. But I did it on purpose. We'll be right back, folks. After these messages, if you want to give me a call, the number is eight seven seven two zero seven two two seven six. We'll be right back. It's Matt Slick Live, taking your calls at 877-207-2276. Here's Matt Slick. All right, everyone, welcome back to the show. Let's get back on the air with uh, Buxman. You still there? Still am, sir. All right. So the unfortunate thing, we'll talk, I'll give you some answers, but uh, it's sad when I meet people who are so given over to the Catholic Church that they believe whatever the Catholic Church teaches, that salvation is found in the Catholic Church. And they are, uh, they, I call them ecclesiologists. Now, an idolater is someone who you know, bows to idols and prays to idols and stuff like that. That's what Catholics teach, what Catholicism teaches. And so ecclesia is the Greek word for church, and he's an ecclesiologer. 
he worships and serves the church. Now, he would deny that. He'd be telling them, no, 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 it's not true. I, I worship Jesus. Say, no, you can't get to Jesus unless you go through your church because your church has the sacraments. You can't go straight to Jesus because if you went straight to Jesus and you asked him to forgive you of your sins, you don't need the priest. You don't need your sacraments. So I said, you, the church tells you you can't get to the sacrament. You can't get the grace that you need unless you go through the official work of the, of the, uh, the true church. So it's, the, in my opinion, the Roman Catholic Church is just a gigantic cult. It's a false church. Now, when I say that, I know a lot of Catholics are listening, and they're probably very offended. Well, hear what I've got to say and see if what the Catholic Church says agrees with Scripture. A lot of Catholics come out of Catholicism just by reading the New Testament. They read it, and they go, wait a minute, this isn't what the Catholic Church teaches, and they leave. Yeah. That's, if it's so easy, you know, I, I say to read. All right, so anyway... So Jesus said, this is in John 6, right? And uh, the issue of, of uh, he believes this is the actual body and blood of Christ. So here's some of the things I ask him. I say, uh, Jesus said that he was the bread that came out of heaven. Was he literally bread when he came out of heaven? This is John six fifty eight. And the answer is, well, no. Okay, he said he's no. a door. Is he literally a door? No. Okay, when he said, this is my body and my blood, is it literally his body and blood? They're going to say, well, yes. Well then, why does the Bible say in Leviticus seventeen fourteen that uh, you're not to eat the blood of any flesh? Now this mm. is the Old Testament law, right? Leviticus seventeen fourteen. So was Jesus instructing his disciples to break the law? That's the question I ask. Wow. And then they give me all kinds of of uh, rationalizations. Well, God can do whatever He wants. You know, they just basically ignore what it says and then try and justify their sin uh, in the Catholic Church. Another question I'll ask them: I'll say, when Jesus instituted the supper, it says, "My body, my blood." Was it His sacrifice, body and blood? And they say, "Well, yes." See, how can that be? Since He hadn't yet been sacrificed. Correct. And, well, wow. he could do whatever he wants. You give these super vague answers that are meaningless. God could do whatever he wants, so therefore that's what happened. It's a useless statement, but that's what they have to do because they, they can't find their arguments from Scripture. Well, it says he's a literal. It's his body and blood. But wait a minute. You're, you're telling me that Jesus was saying that the wine was literally his blood? Literally? And the bread was literally his body? That's what it says. No, it doesn't say literal. Because in John six sixty three, he says, It is the spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and are life. He's talking in a spiritual sense. Is he talking literally? If he's talking literally that the bread and wine are his actual body and blood, then I have a question for them. I say, by definition, can a man be at multiple places at a time? And they say, well, no. Could his physical body be in multiple places? No. Well, Jesus was different. Well, Jesus was a man, right? He still is, but he's a man. Is, is, you said his physical body is not the same as other physical bodies that are, that are male, that, that you know, are human? He said, suddenly, because then you're, you're getting into the, you're messing with the incarnation at this point when they do this. And I'll talk to them. I'll say, yeah. because we know by definition that by definition, a man's, you know, physically in one place at a time. Are you now telling me that when he breaks the bread that now it's his actual body in multiple places at a time now? Is there any place in Scripture where it says this is possible? Well, no, it's not. Well, God could do whatever he wants. And so they don't submit their teachings, their beliefs to the Scriptures. They are idolaters because they submit the Scriptures to their own preferences. They bow to their own preferences. They bow to the Church. And the, the preferences and the Church have taken the place of Christ and therefore they are in idolatry because they have wow. submitted the Word yeah. of God to what they feel and what this so-called true Church says. The Roman Catholic Church is not a Christian church. It is a false church, wow. corrupted. So what so, can I do, and what can anybody else who loves a Catholic or may have a Catholic family member, but yet we're, just to, here, we're this. filled or a.k.a. Protestant, what do we do, man? Try this. I do this with Catholics. And 
You know, I'm telling you now, I'm just saying very boldly, when I'm talking to Catholics, you know, I'm not as bold like that, because I'm just saying generically over radio. I know a lot of Catholics are going to be offended, and I, I, I'm not trying to offend. This is not sensationalism. This is seriousness. This is the gospel. And I'm going to prove something here. And this is what I say to Catholics. I'm going to prove to me. I'm going to prove to you and to others listening that you don't follow the Lord Jesus Christ. You follow your church. And they say, that's foolishness. You can't do that. I say, yes, I can I said, do you believe Jesus is God? Yes. Okay, I do too. Good. Does Jesus have all authority in heaven and earth? Good. Matthew 28, 18. Yes, he does. Does Jesus forgive sins? They'll say, well, yes. Yes, he does. You know, Luke 5, 27, 48. Okay, so he forgives sins. All right. Did Jesus say, come to me, all who are heavy laden? Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. Yes. Did Jesus say in John 14, 14, ask me anything in my name and I will do it? Yes, they did. Okay, so if you were to pray to Jesus and ask Jesus to forgive you of all of your sins, will he? Now, here's the, the, the thing. If they say yes, I'm going to say, then why do you need your priesthood and your sacraments? Because you can get everything Amen. you need straight from Christ. And if they say, well, no, we have to go through the priest. Oh, did Jesus say, go to a priest? Or did Jesus say, come to me? And see, what they'll yes. do is start defending their their church. And they'll say, well, Jesus said, you know, uh, confess your sins one to another. He says, show me where that is. Uh, he says, lay your, your burdens down and bear one another's burdens and stuff like that. And if it says confess one to another, where does it say then that they forgive? Or that's how your sins are forgiven? And it has nothing to do with sacraments, yeah. as you say. You got to be careful what you do with God's word because they so often will quote something, and I say, "Let's go to that verse." And they say, "Well, I'm going to check what you say." Say, "Please do." You can't trust a guy named Slick. Yeah. Come on, go to the word, and they'll say, "Let's go to your verse." And I'll ask them questions, and they don't like the questions. And I show them, see, you need Jesus. You need to come to Jesus. You don't need your church. You don't need your church's authority. You don't need your church's sacramental procedures. You need Jesus. Jesus says, come to me. He didn't say, go to a church. Well, it's the founder, foundation, the pillar of truth. You know, First Timothy 3.15, I say, yeah. They say, see, that's the Catholic Church. I say, no, no. You don't even know what that means. They just assume, never talk about the church. It automatically means the Roman Catholic Church. They can't even think outside of that Roman Catholic box. They just sure. can't. They're so indoctrinated and brainwashed. And there's the music. Hold on, buddy. First we'll be right back after these messages. Please stay tuned. Okay? It's Matt Slick Live, taking your calls at 877-207-2276. Here's Matt Slick. All right, when, but, <laughs> I just messed up. Welcome back to the show, Buster. Are you still there? I am, Matt. And what comes to my mind as you was given a great rundown, I, I took some notes, um, is 1 Timothy 2, verses 3 to 5, Mm -hmm. And the key verse in there, Matt, that jumped out at me was, there is one mediator between God and man, the man Jesus Christ. It doesn't speak of Mary. It doesn't speak of St. Paul. It doesn't speak of, of, of Father uh, Jonathan or whatever the name of the priest is of each parish. Mm -hmm. It says one mediator between God, who the dear Catholic is wanting to have a relationship i believe my friend dearly wants a relationship with god man. and then point him to jesus I, ask him does he right. pray to jesus does he ask jesus to forgive him of all of his sins point him to christ have him go straight to jesus tell him if he goes to jesus he doesn't need to go to a sacramental system but this is going to this is going to confuse him because he's so indoctrinated <laughs> brainwashed into the ceremony that this is the truth that he will have so much difficulty, but all you have to do, you have to give all these answers. You just say, but isn't Jesus enough for you? Don't you just need to go to Jesus like he said? Come to me, all who are heavy laden, at 11 28. Isn't he enough? Isn't he enough? Now, and just I'll listen bet. to the justification. He, 
He's been a Catholic, Matt, ever since he was a child. So think yes, about he's that. He's indoctrinated. This man is, he, I mean, so I bet he would ask me, Busman, how do I do that? How do I go to Jesus? Because he's so conditioned, Matt, to go to the priest or go to his parish. I know. You know what I mean? Or light yeah. the candle. But look, did, just just I like mean, being that's a just like being style change. I know, but just like being born in Mormonism, he's brainwashed. It's all he knows. His sincerity is not going to save him. His sincerity before God is not going to help. He has to come to the yeah. truth, and the truth is Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Right. Got to believe in the true and living right. God. And the true and living gospel and the the enemy of the gospel has caused so many false religious systems to to grow and to prosper and the test Boy, here is ultimately are you yes it is are, you know ask him are you trusting in Jesus completely and totally or are you not because all cults all false religions they'll you know that use the Bible they'll say Jesus plus Whatever it is I have to do, whether it be sacraments or baptism or keeping the law or not doing this bad, and the together gets us saved. It's all the same. It's the same formula that the devil himself has used in Catholicism, in Eastern Orthodoxy, in Mormonism, in Jehovah's Witnesses, in Islam. It, it, it's what God does and what you do. The arrogance. They're criminals. See, they're, they're going to think of themselves as criminals before God because they've broken the law of God. We are all criminals. We've broken God's law. And therefore, the judgment of the righteous judge will fall upon us. And he does not ignore the law because he's righteous. And the only way to escape the judgment of, be of being a criminal is your faith and trust in what Jesus did, God in flesh, who took all the punishment of the law due to us, and he took it, and if you trust in what he did, then that alone justifies you and makes you okay. Because if you say, no, he did not do enough, I have to add to it, then it means he did not satisfy all the legal requirements for your deliverance. And so this is why the wow. Roman Catholic Church, and the Mormons, and the Jehovah's Witnesses, and Eastern Orthodox are full of the satanic doctrines of the false teacher, the devil himself, because they teach that their works, their so-called holiness, their so-called sincerity, their so-called whatever it is they want to do in concert with the word of God, with the, the blood of Christ, will get them salvation. And they cannot see the arrogance of their foolishness because they do not have the mind of Christ with, dwelling within them. They have the mind of humanistic philosophy that has been developed by their false prophets. That's what's going on. So let me ask you this, Matt. So things are coming to my mind. I could I could take him out to lunch. Mm -hmm. I could do that and and just bring a copy of the scriptures. But also, Matt, like we were talking about with your previous caller, it, would it behoove a friend of a Catholic or a family member of a Catholic to go and reach their shepherd, if you will, the priest? Like, what if I went and talk to his he's, he's just as much a child of the he he's, he's just as much a child as a devil as the one that he's cho he's trying to get in to the catholic church and follow the, the same sacramental the system blind. he's the blind leading the blind I, when i meet a priest whenever i meet a priest catholic priest i automatically assume he's an unbeliever he's not saved but he's a he's a cult member that's that's what i assume he's not a christian he thinks he so is how, so do you yeah. Do you go ahead and counsel that man with, with scripture, I, or how, how do you engage that priest, Matt? Well, I, I try and be, be patient and loving and respectful. I honestly do, you know, but uh, uh, I don't meet priests very often. But the last time I really met a priest, he was on the radio with me when I was doing radio here in Boise area, and he came in, and I was very gentle with him and, and very tough. And I told him flat out, I said, I don't believe you're a Christian. And I said, I'm not trying to be mean. I'm not trying to be offensive. I just don't believe you're Christian. I don't believe the Catholic Church is Christian. And he said he understood that, and he didn't take offense to it. He didn't call me names and throw something at me and walk out. He was, you know, it's a gentleman. But he understood. I meant it in a gentlemanly way, but I meant it in a way of truth and care and love towards him because I believe he's lost. And we had a nice discussion, and that's how that's that's the yeah. attitude I take when I'm I'm with a priest. I'm just curious, how did that end? Matt? How did that conversation end with him? How did how did you guys part? Went, what was the the feel of the the end well, all? We, I guess it, it went well. He wasn't mad at me. I wasn't mad at him. He understood my position. He understood why I taught it. 
and why I hold to it. And, you know, it was like shaking hands at the end. Thank you very much for coming in. And, you know, it was like that. That is how I hope to treat people. And so when I tell them, I don't believe your church is true. And I believe that you're on your way to hell. I believe your priest is helping you go there. They, I, tr I try and tell people, look, please understand, I'm not mad at you. I'm hurting for you. I believe you don't have a false gospel. And sometimes they'll say, well, I believe you have a false gospel, man. I say, well, okay. If you believe that, let's talk about what that gospel is. Let's go to the word. Let's see, yeah. you know. And and I'm not Show offended with some, you know, Catholic father or brother, or whatever he's called. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And I'm not offended when a when a Catholic says that I'm outside and I'm I'm a worker of the devil. I don't take offense to that. That's their position. And so I say, good, okay. You're being honest. You're being forthright. Let's talk about it. Let's go to God's word. Let's let's go back and forth. And that's what I want to do with people. But on the radio. Sometimes people like you and others will say something, and it called they call them Matt's rants, where I get in these little little modes for like a minute, and I'll just start saying stuff because it's true, because the Roman Catholic Church is not Christian, and all who die believing in its official doctrine are on their way to hell. It doesn't mean there aren't Christians in the Catholic Church, but if they are there, they're there in spite of Catholic theology, which teaches Antichrist doctrine. It does. Okay. Are those people the ones that the hope for the Christian or the uh, Catholic conversion to true faith, Matt, do you think? The people that do go in to the parish? Well, it's, it's a, a variety of things. People can be saved in the Catholic Church. They don't realize everything the Catholic Church teaches. Just like there could be people in Mormonism who don't know what Mormonism really teaches. I've talked to Mormons. Sure. They don't or know. Even, they, even in Protestant. A lot of people that go to church oh, yeah. don't understand the tenets of true faith. That's true, too. Yes, sir. You got that right. And that's another thing. Thanks for bringing that up. I don't just say the Catholics and the Mormons are bad as an example. I say the Protestant church has got its problems, too. I'm not the, the Mr. Judge of the universe here. I'm just saying the Protestant church has got to get its act together because idolatry is alive and well in Protestantism, too. And you can find it with Kenneth Copeland and Joel Osteen and Joyce Meyer. You can find heresies all over the place in Protestantism. Just because we're yes, Protestant do doesn't mean we're immune. Lately. I'm sorry, what? What? Jesse Duplantis, Matt, yes. made a statement about prosperity is a is a blessing, and and uh, uh, poor people, kind of like myself, are cursed. And I thought, do you teach that to the folks in the far reaches in the tribal areas of Africa who have true Jesus in their heart, and they are using that hope to find another scrap of food? Are you serious, Jesse Duplantis? Go ahead. I'm sorry, you got me on a rant now. That's Matt. right. <laughs> well, Jesse Duplantis needs to be uh, prayed for, that he would repent of his false doctrines. We don't want, I don't want God to judge him and, for his evil. But here's, Amen. This is I what, agree with that. This is what the Bible says. Have this attitude in yourselves, which also is in Christ Jesus, who, although he existed in the form of God, did not regard equality with God a thing to be grasped, but he emptied himself, taking the form of a bondservant, being made in the likeness of men. He, being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, death on a cross. Is this prosperity? Is this the teaching that God wants your best life now, that you've got to have a lot of money in your bank account? Of course it is not. But it is these men in their idolatrous, blasphemous, humanistic philosophies are saying, yes, you need to give me money so that you can be blessed by God with more money for yourself. This is usury, and the temples of their hearts need to be cleansed from the idolatrous practices within them. Hey, buddy, we got to go. There's a break, okay? <laughs> Talk to you later, man. Love you, man. Okay. Thank you, sir. Bye-bye. All right, God bless. Hey, folks, be right back. Please stay tuned. It's Matt Slick Live, taking your calls at 877-207-2276. Here's Matt Slick. All right, everyone, welcome back to the last segment of the show. If you want to give me a call, all you have to do is dial 877-207-2276. Luke from Washington. Welcome, you're on the air. Luke. Luke, Luke, are you there? Hi, Matt. How are you? Sorry. <laughs> I'm fine. I'm fine, man. What do you got, buddy? Uh, I was talking to one of my uh, uh, co-worker. He's a Catholic. And okay. he said, uh, um, uh, Calvinists uh, uh, Calvinist are heretic. 
And then, okay. uh, do you know what is the purpose of uh, Council of Trends? For so, what is the purpose of Council of Trends? It was to deal with the uh, the rising Reformation, which was happening at that time, and so the the council was uh, convened in three cities, uh, and over a period of uh, almost twenty years, I think it was eighteen years, and um, they dealt with uh, issues of dogma and doctrine clarified according to the the uh, the Catholic traditions. And so they, in that, they said uh, the authority of tradition and scripture were equal. And so they did a lot of stuff like that. They anathematized and cursed the real gospel. Okay. Yeah, and then uh, he said, I am not a Protestant. You are a Protestant of the Protestants. So who is the real Protestant? Lutherans? It just depends, it depends what you mean by Protestant. Definitions are always the, the first thing. So what, what's a Protestant? Okay, And there can be different definitions, so ask him to define it. Okay? All right? Yeah, yeah they said uh, uh, the Presbyterians are not Protestants. Lutherans are pro- Protestants. Okay. Yeah, okay, fine. What, just say, okay, then fine, whatever. Now what do you want to talk about? See why argue mm-hmm. over something like that if he's if he wants to say we're not Protestants? Okay, whatever. Okay, so what do you want to talk about? You want to talk about the Bible? That way the, the conversation's gone. Now let's get to the important stuff. That's what I would say. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, well, what is the Protestants Council? First Council. What is what was the purpose of the you know? What is uh, the opposite know. of this Council of Trent? There is the opposite of the Council of Trent. Well, it had a lot of truth in yeah. it, but it had a lot of, of lies from the devil woven into their official doctrines uh, regarding uh, justification or salvation in particular. And that's um, I've, I've, all I've really read and studied out, out of the uh, the Council of Trent. So I, you know, I need to, which I, well, which I had under hundred years yeah. of life, be able to study everything. But uh, the, you know, so there's a lot there. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Matt. All right, buddy. Okay, God bless. Bye. Let's get to Alan from Virginia. Alan, welcome. You are on the air. Hey, Matt. How's it going? Oh, it's going. Hanging in there, man. What do you got, buddy? So one thing I um I watched the Muslim debate you had with that person recently, and oh, he yeah, brought up the. For, Yep. Uh, he he brought up God is not the author of confusion, mm-hmm. uh, or I guess maybe I'm not doing it exactly verbatim, but I mm-hmm. thought about that, and then I thought about Mark 4.12. Mm-hmm. Can you harmonize them for me? Well, he's not the author of confusion. First Corinthians 14.33, and Mark uh, 4.12, he speaks in parables so people will not be saved. That's why he did. That's not confusion. See, the word there uh, in Greek, let me get to it, is, um, is, uh, ooh, akatastasias. That's a big word, akatastasias. And so it, uh, it just deals with uh, tumult, uh, tumults, disturbance, disorder, things like that. And so God is not the, the author of confusion, but of peace. So notice the juxtaposition. Not disorder, but peace. Not tumult and confusion and problems, but of peace. So there's a, the, uh, the contrast. So in Mark 4, Jesus is not uh, offering confusion because he's speaking parables. Parables are the God-ordained means of speaking to convey truths. And those who study God's word will then learn it. So some might say, well, if he's, he's going to speak clearly, then he didn't need parables. Well, then we could take that to say, then why didn't he exemplify or codify the doctrine of the Trinity or his own incarnation with two natures? Because Jesus didn't do those either. But yet we know those are true from Scripture. So it's not an issue of clarity versus confusion. Because clarity deals with what comes out of God. And people many times don't understand what God has said. That's their own fault. And so when people say, well, he, as this, this really horrible debater, you know, Ahmed, uh, his name was, 
a year on that. He was truly a horrible logician, uh, really bad. But when he brings up stuff like this, he doesn't understand the issues. So, you know, it just, I hope that helps, but uh, okay. So just so you know, the word occurs uh, five times in, in the Bible. And it's translated as yeah. disturbances, confusion, tumult, disturbance, and disorder. Okay. Okay. Are you there? All right. So, yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you. So that's what it is, and it means something unstable, commotion, uncertainty. Okay, and so these are the that's the basic re, uh, mean, uh, meaning of the word. So it's not an issue of confusion. God doesn't confuse people, but He does often hide the truths, because He has done that. Okay, He hides. What is it? Oh, it says oh. He hides from. Yeah, go ahead. So obscurity is not confusion in this in this manner. Right. You have to see what you know in this translation. Confusion, right? And uh, I'm looking. Different translations will say disorder. And other translations, I'm looking at, say, dissension. So confusion, disorder, uh, yeah. And those are the three main ones. I've got, like, I don't know, 15 translations here that I can just glance down through. So that's what's happening there. And it doesn't mean uh, that he's trying to confuse you. He can certainly hide truth from you, and he does. Would you agree? Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's right. So he does that. Now, why would he do that? Okay. So that's another topic for another time. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Do, do, do you think he also speaks in parables so that he can speak to those he, he wants to know, uh, or so that he can speak to those he wants to get a message across without lying? Yes. And also think about this. This is just a theory I've been thinking about off and on. Jesus is God. If he commanded something to happen with intention, it's going to happen because he's God. What if he? What if? What if? In the doctrine of election and predestination, God the Father had given certain individuals to the Son for safekeeping. We know that God the Father elected. That's Ephesians one four and five, and He predestined. That's what the Bible says. Okay, so Jesus says I came, he, that he came down from heaven not to do his own will, but the will of the Father who sent him. And this is the will of the Father, that everyone who has been given to him, he would lose none. Okay, so could it be, in light of that, could it be that Jesus speaks in parables because certain people around there were not chosen ones to believe by God? Because the Bible says in Acts 13, 48, as many as had been appointed to eternal life, believed. So they believe because they're appointed to eternal life. So if Jesus is there and he speaks the truth without a parable, then it would almost seem as though the ones he's commanding to believe would have to believe to be elect, but maybe they weren't. So you, you see what I'm getting at? It's a little bit tough. It's like, so, so when the audience would potentially have an unbeliever, he would speak in a parable, potentially? Is that what you're saying? But potentially. The parables were like time bombs because you you you, know, you look at them and go, okay, wait a minute. He's thinking this thing. Wait a minute. He's talking about us. As they, as they would figure things out. And the parables have some incredible truths in them. Um, and so, like, you know, the parable of the of uh, the prodigal, I mean, the prodigal son. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll go with the prodigal son, too. But the, um, the son who stayed with the father was representative of the Jews. And the one who left was representative of the Gentiles. And he's getting rewarded even though the elder son stayed with him and kept his word, and kept his law. And yet the father celebrated that the other one was a welcome back and didn't require any works of him. There's all this stuff is there. And as people are figuring this stuff out. Or the, uh, the, the good Samaritan. A Samaritan was hated by the Jews. And the man who's on the ground is unconscious and naked, so you can't tell who he is or where he's from, his ethnicity. You can't tell from his uh, dress, his clothing, that is, and his speech. And so these things, who is he? Who's the good Samaritan? It's the Jews hated them. But he's the one who rescued this guy, and he was the one who proved to be the true neighbor. That the Bible says, love your neighbor. That's Leviticus uh, 
18, 19, 17, 18. So the Bible tells them in the Old Testament to love their neighbor. Well, who's a neighbor? And then Jesus is showing this to the Jews to show them their failure. There's so many things about the parables that are just awesome. Okay? All right. I appreciate it, Matt. Okay, man. God bless, buddy. Okay. All right. Uh, let's go to Carolyn from Ohio. Carolyn, welcome. We have about two minutes, two and a half minutes in the show. Sorry about that, but go ahead. Okay. I'm Matt. I'm new at listening to you and really enjoying it, but I just have a question that's been really bothering me. I okay. recently met a woman at church who uh, took me out to lunch to tell me that she's a practicing homosexual. Uh, she's living with a woman, and uh, she's a Christian. She's a child of God, and she goes to church, and she um, dresses like I say a man dresses. Um, she stands up and praises the Lord, and she sings, and then she comes into our Sunday school class, and she'll start out with a song to lead everybody in a, a hymn. She anyway, no doing that. She, told me, she told me that she is full of the Holy Spirit, and the she's Spirit not. has not told her that she's doing anything wrong. I told her, yeah. you're living in sin. You're going to go to hell. Good for you. You can't. So, Good for you. But, yes. you know, I've mm -hmm. wrestled with this. You know, I, want, I need to love her, but I don't want to be friends with her. I don't want to even sit with her. And I'm having a hard time at church. Well, let's let's get to this really quickly because we've got about a minute. Do, do the elders okay. of the church know this? and Are they approving her of her leading things and doing stuff? Because they should not. That's one question. No, and, so I talked to one of the assistant ministers, and I I told him I said I will leave this church if I find out she's in any uh, do, leadership. Do position. they allow that? Do they allow it? Are they allowing it? Are they? I don't think so. Okay, good. Now, I mean, you did the right thing. Yeah, we, we're so much out of oh, so close to the end here. I, so I'm trying to get quickly here. Sorry about that, but um, you did the right, right thing. You're telling her the truth. She is living in hypocrisy. She is self-deceived. She needs to repent of her great sin. And if you read Romans chapter one, starting about verse 23, and you read at the end of the chapter, you'll see that there's judgment upon the sexual immorality, and the judgment is to believe the lie. And she is under that judgment, believing the lie that she can do both. That she can be in blatant sin and rebellion against God. God and be filled with the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit will not do that she's not feeling the conviction which means the, the uh, judgment of God is upon her she's self-deceived okay oh man okay come Thank back you tomorrow so much, we gotta man. talk about this come back tomorrow because we're just out okay. of time yeah. all right sorry okay we'll that. do all right sorry Thank about you. that okay uh, and oh, um all right whoever everyone called to sorry to get to him. hey folks sorry about that we're just out of time may the Lord bless you by his grace we'll back on here tomorrow and We'll talk to you then. God bless. Another program powered by the Truth Network.